Hi guys. So the majority of you asked for a video on how you get your day back on track when your naps don't go to plan. So here's a little bit of information. So it really depends on the age of the child, how many naps are in their schedule and what time of the day that happens, that your failed nap happens. So the younger a child, the more naps they have. So you've got a better chance of getting yourself back on track before bedtime. The older a child is, the trickier it can be because if you give an emergency nap later on in the day, it can offset the sleep pressure for bedtime. And all of a sudden you're having a party at 9 p.m. because someone had a nap late in the day. And um, if you haven't done it yet, you're gonna do it at some stage and you will you will not be happy <laughs> but you live and learn and um, we've all done it so uh, there's two main approaches that I would take I would either use a bridge the gap nap or I would give lots of quiet time and offer the next due nap or bedtime around 15 minutes earlier I don't usually go more than 15 minutes early so what I don't do is make massive allowances for a failed nap so for example this Baba normally has around two and a half hours for a morning nap say tomorrow she had half an hour and the doorbell rang and the dog barked and she's only had half an hour and i wasn't there to help her back to sleep quite quickly so she's had a little adrenaline kick the dog barked gave her a bit of a fright she's not going back so what i could do there is give her a wake window offer the nap again because there's still a good chunk of time left in that nap and then get her back up at her usual time around 11 a.m boom we're back on track what I don't do is say, oh, well, you'd half an hour, so I'm gonna offer you a nap at around 11 a.m. instead of our normal 1 p.m. because then I'm gonna have either four naps in my day that are gonna enter either an early or later cycle. So I'm not going to offer her a big nap drastically early at 11 a.m. when she normally doesn't sleep until 1 p.m. till 3, 3.30. So, I'm not making mass plans, but I'm using a bridge the gap nap to get us back on track. So, and again, she only had half an hour in the morning. I let her have a wake window. I'm gonna um, either help her to sleep in the sling or the buggy. That might be easier in those kind of cases. And then we're back on. Uh, we're back up at eleven. Even if she only had forty-five minutes, we're back up at eleven a.m. And then we're back on track. Now, say if your older child over 12 months who is lingering in between two naps, so your morning nap drops away between 13 and 15 months old. So say if your 13 month old's big nap didn't go to plan because granny called to the door or whatever happened and they've only had 45 minutes. So you can either say, oh gosh, you only had 45 minutes, you can put them in the buggy if they're a child who might go sleep in the buggy and go for a walk, let them look at the world and see if they'll nod off. If they did nod off um, just before three o'clock and their normal uptime is around 3.15, we can let them sleep till 3.30 and boom, we've, we've recharged the batteries enough to get us to bedtime, but not too much to ruin bedtime. Try and avoid emergency cat naps late in the day, even after kind of like nine months old, because it can make bedtime trickier and you can enter a later cycle. Another example, say if we have a six month old child who a six month old for a morning nap, I recommend in and around an hour and 15 minutes of a morning nap. Some need an hour, some need an hour and a half, but in and around um, the majority of children I worked with, work with, um, around an hour and 15 does quite well for a morning nap say if our doorbell rang or whatever we were traveling and the child woke up after half an hour again not going to bring my big nap from one o'clock all the way back to like 11 30. what i could do is offer quiet time and hope that they will sleep again and if they do take that sleep but it's like they fell asleep at 10 30 when normally they're up at 10 30 what are we going to do you can let them have a little 20 minute 30 minute sleep at that time and push your big nap to 115 120 latest and then you're back on track so again not making massive allowances and not starting the next day the only time I make um, big, big compensations is when a child is sick. I'm like, you were up all night, you know, you're sick. The routine goes out the window. You just help up and get back on track um, when they're better. But while they're sick, you just do go with the flow, do whatever needs to be done. You can still do darkness from like seven to seven. That can help keep that little routine. This advice that I'm giving you is very much for parents who are routine orientated. If you feed on demand, nap on demand, it's 
probably not really going to apply to you unless your child has fallen into a little uh, schedule by themselves so each to their own whatever makes you and your baba happy and um, but they're the tips that i would use um, and the same when i'm traveling so when i have a travel day whatever goes goes a strong bedtime routine whether they slept really well during the travel or it was <laughs> very much a bit of a shit show <laughs> okay you still do your bedtime routine and um, boom, you, you, your child doesn't know what time it is, doesn't know what country they're in. They know that you're queuing them up for sleep. You may need to add in an extra dream feed at night time. You may have an early wake the next day, but by um, making conscious effort to stick to what you would normally do at home will get you on track. There's a video, there's two videos on travel on if you're booking flights, um, go long haul, try book at night time. Um, uh, if you're staying local, then you can uh, book as early as possible in the day. So there's two videos there and um, that might help you with that. But yeah, that's about how I get our days back on track. And believe me, um, it happens more often than you would think, especially when you travel as much as these guys do but it's part and parcel of, of their lives. So it's what we have to kind of learn how to get back on track without making massive allowances. And this Baba is still sleeping from uh, 6.30 to 6.30. Um, we were on seven to seven, we've kind of shifted 6.30, 6.30, and that actually suits the family quite well. And our dream feed, second dream feed has been reduced down to three ounces and that will be gone soon. So, and this, Baba is thriving. Her wake windows are lovely and happy and we've just found our words recently, well our sounds recently, so that's what I hear when my little roommate here wakes up in the morning, so or wakes up from after her nap, so all good. Um, I hope you found that useful and I will make another video on the other topic as soon as I get a chance. Sweet dreams.